Welcome to the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Vantage Circle, the leading employee benefits and engagement platform. Employee engagement and decreased turnover are both linked to a positive corporate culture. Organizations with engaged employees with a strong culture have a competitive edge, highlighting the necessity of measuring and understanding culture. What is the foundation of a good company culture? Why do we need to prioritize corporate culture during a crisis? And there is so much more to know about it. Let's know in today's episode. Hi, everyone. This is Sushmita from the Vantage HR Influencers Podcast. And my guest today is Keith Herman, who is a business growth expert, speaker, entrepreneur, and the founder of IPA Equities. Welcome to the show, Keith. Hi, thank you for having me. Great. Okay, so um, as we begin, could you please uh, start by introducing yourself to audience? Absolutely. I'm Keith Herman, the founder of IPA Equities and Aura Collective, a tech PR and marketing firm. Okay, so uh, Keith, uh, today's topic that we're going to discuss is how to build a positive company culture. So before proceeding to the other questions, uh, the very first thing that our audience would like to know is uh, what is the importance of a great company culture? I would say the survival of the company. Okay, so uh, so it's definitely one of the most powerful competitive weapon, isn't it, for for a company? Uh, yeah, yes, I see it as a, a catalyst for growth. People are in a healthy environment with positivity. They thrive personally and handle their workflow more efficiently. They also produce better results, and in turn, the company benefits as well as it, as its customers and partners. Right. Okay, so I personally Keith, believe that hiring people who fit at your culture is a first step in creating a successful corporate culture. So what is your view on the same? What is the foundation of a good company culture according to you? Well, I agree in a centralized environment, absolutely. However, in a decentralized environment, it's not necessarily the case because not everyone will necessarily interact with with each other. Hmm. So, yeah, what are the other elements that make a, a company culture great, you know, uh, except, uh, you know, hi- your uh, hiring people that f- uh, who fit your culture? Well, I believe the foundation of a, a good company culture is the same as any successful relationship, and that's respect. Okay. Any other elements? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> from my experience, uh, other critical elements would be open-mindedness, tolerance, diversity, inclusion. I think those mm-hmm. are all important mm-hmm. as well. Right. Okay. So, um, Keith, a strong company culture is linked to not only you know a lower turnover, but also a higher employee engagement. So, uh, organizations with an engaged employees and a strong culture have an advantage over their competitors, as we believe, and that emphasizes the importance of assessing and understanding culture. How can we evaluate company culture through employee engagement? Well, the frequency that employees willingly want to engage is an excellent indicator. If uh, they leave wanting to come back for more, then that's, you know, that as an employer, you're batting a thousand. Hmm. Okay. So then it's vital uh, to make the most of the vast uh, pool of talent available outside of full-time and in-house positions. And uh, um, it is also said that, you know, um, in America, they are they are undergoing a phase which they call uh, the startup boom. And more and more smart businesses are recognizing the necessity of a close inspection of how they embrace, you know, remote and part-time employees or freelancers into their company. So I'm sure you will agree that a a great company culture keeps everyone involved, motivated and excited, regardless of their status or role. Would you like to share your view on this? Well, it's absolutely important to evaluate what people are contributing. And for those that are remote, they need to feel that they're part of the team and making a valuable contribution to the success of the company. Hmm. With regards to keeping everyone involved, motivated and excited, I'm a firm believer in empowering others rather than motivating them. And I say this because external motivation has a limited life and therefore significantly less value. If you were to chart it, you'd see that as the excitement drops uh, in direct proportion of the loss of motivation. And conversely, if people are given the right tools and instructions to succeed, they become empowered and internally motivated and excited because they're succeeding on a personal level. And as a result, they produce more and better quality. And it's a win-win situation 
company also benefits for being known for this type of culture and is able to attract better talent. Mm-hmm. So again, uh, uh, when you talk about a feedback culture, it is one of the most effective ways to boost, you know, employee morale, and uh, it creates a more positive and happy workplace. How do you describe the value of uh, employee feedback or feed forward? Plain, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Plain and simple <laughs> employee, employee feedback is in, is invaluable. I'm, I'm a big believer in two way communication. We live in such a data driven world these days, where it's become commonplace to know that if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Hmm. Okay. So, um, yeah. So why even in a moment of crisis, like if you take this present crisis of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, why do we need to uh, prioritize the corporate culture? Well, as I said from the beginning, corporate culture is responsible for the survival of every business. And it's more uh, apparent than ever Uh, Some great examples would be the Weinstein Company, WeWork, and many others that eventually implode because of the toxicity of their company culture. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, what role uh, does a a company culture play in helping an organization recover from from a crisis, maybe? Well, in the tech world, we're accustomed to working remotely and being centralized, so it's not a big adjustment. Nevertheless, I think now more than ever, it's imperative to share resources to help people get their work done. Mm. Uh, Doing so accomplishes a few things. First, it keeps stress to a minimum. Second, it makes employees feel more secure about their future because they know so long as they get their work done, they'll have a job. And equally important, they feel valued because you gave them your time and not just a paycheck. So all in all, the result is a, is a deeper connection. Yeah. So can you like offer some uh, thoughts on, uh, you know, food for thought on how a company might be able to better utilize this time to connect with their team on a deeper level? Uh, well, I, I, again, I think, um, you know, it's communicating and spending more time um, just you know, it's it's the time factor. When people, employees understand that you're actually giving them their time, um, that's where connection is really made. You can give people resources, you can give them direction. But I think today people really want your time because it, it makes them feel more secure. And that's really what builds deeper connections. Right. Okay. So, uh, Keith, um, what are the top uh, company culture trends of 2021 that are going to stick around as you believe? Number one would have to be casual dress. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I think there's going to be a lot more relaxed uh, uh, dress codes moving mm-hmm. forward. Also, uh, remote working as companies learn to live with less. And I would also say diversity and inclusion. And I think those are probably the, my, the top three um, that I think are, are going to be very apparent. Um, well, I, um, you know, I, I think just with regards to uh, culture, I think that it's, it's something that employers need to spend more time on. And uh, because I think that it's very much overlooked and, uh, going back to, to what I said at the very beginning, it's the survival of the company. And uh, people, when they feel that they're part of something and when you spend time with them and you help them and you nurture them, it's just like, it's similar to a family environment. The more loving and caring you are to people, the more they want to come to the family dinners and they want to spend time together. And I think it's the same with a, with a company that it's something that has to be nurtured and it's not just giving people uh, material things, but it's giving them time and it's giving them tools and, uh, you know, the opportunity for them, you know, to really shine as a person. And I think that's, uh, you know, what we need to see more of versus, you know, focusing on productivity. Um, You know, we became a very automated culture And it was all about producing, you know, through automation. And I think that, you know, losing that, uh, that personal connection, um, we've we've seen, uh, you know, diminished returns. And I think by returning back to the company culture and uh, having those deeper connections, 
people will see uh, a much a much greater return on their investment. So um, I think you know that that's probably uh, I mean at least that, that's my view of of the value of uh, you know the company culture. Right. Okay. So what would be your suggestions to our HR listeners? Well, I think they're in a very unique period uh, where there are many people in need of work and many companies that are forced to accept change. In other words, it's an opportunity to make some great things happen because both employees and employers are open to new ideas. So, you know, it's their opportunity as a facilitator to make those great things you know, become a reality. Okay, good. So anything else you want to add in our podcast, Pete? I think that's that's pretty much it. I think, uh, you know, again, it's it's a great topic and it's one that we should be talking about more. Okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, for those folks in the HR, uh, it's a time for them, you know, to really shine. Okay, so uh, how can our listeners reach out to you? Well, I'm all over social media, but the easiest way to get all to me is directly through email. And my email is my initials, kh at oraco.com, O-U-R-A-C-O.com. Okay. And we'll put that up in the show notes. And um, that was great connecting to you, Keith. And thank you so much for being a part of the Vantage H and Influences podcast. Sure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast, where we engage with HR influencers about human resources. Please do subscribe to Vantage HR Influencers Podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify for new episodes.